Okay, well, I'll, I'll just get started with the V3 stuff. So uh, there's a few things going on there. First of all, the regular UDPA stuff um, continues in the background and we're working with the working group there to try and uh, hash out different aspects. Previously it was the transport protocol. Right now we're looking at things like the uh, data model and you know, how L7 routing can be handled in this context. The goal here is actually to do two things, to um, universalize or generalize uh, Envoy's routing APIs that other proxies might implement them and to have this sort of uh, lingua franca for uh, L7 routing. And in addition, to solve some of the scaling problems that exist uh, very concretely in Envoy's APIs today, where everything's essentially a linear match and uh, we're unable to effectively make use of things like try structures or uh, hashing uh, deterministically. Uh, it's always possible to write, for example, an optimizer against what we have today for, in, in Envoy, but um, that's not the direction we want to go. We want to actually structurally improve things in the next generation routing API. And so that's currently what we're hashing out there in the guise of the UDPA efforts. Other stuff happening there is we've actually split out the UDPA protos, including Orca, into a separate repository, which now lives under CNCF slash UDPA, and Envoy brings that into its build as an external dependency. And uh, that's then sets the direction for where we want to go with the V3 XDS API. So moving away from just this uh, long-term UDPA effort, we want to, at the end of this quarter, cut the uh, V3 major version of the XDS APIs. And given we don't even have V3 alphas today, the, there's not going to be a lot that's very uh, revolutionary here. They'll be very evolutionary. We'll be essentially taking the V3, uh, uh, the V2 XDS APIs and uh, removing anything that's marked deprecated. We'll be... There's a few comments around next API major version about doing things. For example, we'll throw away the old regexes and just have safe regex and this kind of thing. And, you know, um, get a better alignment around things like header and path matching and string matching and all this kind of stuff, which was a bit uh, ad hoc. And the other thing that we'll probably do is move some of the base types in XDS across the UDPA repository as a sort of a, uh, a step towards that. So that's essentially what you should expect out of the V3 APIs. But even though this would be a relatively small semantic difference from the V2 APIs, we're still following the, the full you know, API versioning story. So what it means is from when these are cut, you'll have a, about a year to uh, start uh, turning down your use of V2 and moving over all your servers to V3 and switching over to um, uh, basically, yeah, to, to, to uh, new endpoints, new code path, new generated code, all this kind of stuff. And, I think the way to see this really is as a canary of uh, Envoy's API version policy, as well as a way of, for us to actually safely turn down some of the technical debt that we've built up. The V4 APIs will, will probably be much closer towards where we're heading with UDPA, and lots of things will be moved into the sort of a common UDPA tree there, and they will be much more probably revolutionary than evolutionary. Uh, I was going to say, uh, and I, I think the goal, though, I just want to make sure that from our side, we're on the same page, is that, I mean, we're still focusing on making sure that the developer experience is decent, right? So, you know, I mean, that includes like not sacrificing documentation, making sure that we have those. Um, I, I think, I don't wanna speak for Harvey explicitly, but I think our plan there is to have translation tools since we have to do it internally to Envoy anyway. So it's like, we're gonna convert probably the old V2 APIs to the new V3 APIs, we can very likely have a, a config dump tool that will spit out what the new config would actually look like to help developers transition. Um, but, yeah. but, I, but I think just as we go through this process, for those that are a little more bleeding edge out there, feedback on the developer experience is useful because we wanna make sure that, that you know we're not making things worse. Yeah, I mean, the idea really is by shooting for very low bar for the API changes for V3, it will allow us to focus on tooling and infrastructure and process and all this other good goodness. Um, and in particular, given the fact that there's very little change between the two APIs, really, it will allow us to, it, it makes sense to not have to, for example, re-implement twice everything that's in V2 for V3 and really think about very carefully about how we do this translation and automate as much as possible because there'll be a huge payoff from that. 
Yeah. Um, and then uh, there are a few other things that I, I would like to fix in this minor rev, which I think I've mentioned to a couple of people. So on the listener and the cluster side right now, we have um, a bunch of embedded fields that are protocol specific um, that really either should be opaque extensions or one of so you know things like is it a UDP listener or a TCP listener, or for some of the upstream cluster stuff, you know should they be opaque protocol extensions? And right now they're just embedded fields that are are null or or not. I think there's some low hanging fruit there to actually fix that. Um, yeah, I think we will optimistically get through some of those. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, but that's all on the V3 front. Does anyone have any questions about that? Cool. Well, what is the project timeline for V3 right now? It's literally end of September is the plan and Basically, whatever we have at the end of September ships as V3. I, I mean, just just for my understanding, does it like does it have to be that that rigid? I, I mean, if it's an alpha, like why why can't we continue? It's, uh, to it's the application clock essentially. It's pushing back even further. Basically, we're at, the, we're at the, this point where we can no longer deprecate anything and remove it from the API, and uh, this is. Uh, you know, it's moving things. I, I would. We 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 want this essentially the clock to correspond with envoy releases, which are end of the quarter, right? And this is it. If we if we make it slip towards the end of the year, that's a, an additional quarter on anything which has been marked deprecated. Uh, so you know, anything that's been marked deprecated is going to live at least from this point onwards for at least a year plus. You know, uh, two months or something like that. Right now, or one month. Sorry, that's not what I meant. I, I think that's fine. But if we basically snap, or you're saying that at the end of September, it, you don't want it to be V3 alpha, you want it actually to be v, V3. That's right. Okay. So there'll be a very short V3 alpha where we just shut, uh, shuffling a few things around and marking these deprecated. I'm probably okay. going to start to have V3 alpha next week. Um, and okay, I mean that that feels ex extremely aggressive to, to yeah, me. It, so it is aggressive, but that's why I'm not shooting for a high bar for the actual API changes. I I guess my question though is, I mean, we have to live with this for quite some time. Like, yeah. if it takes us one week extra, you know, to to fix a couple other things, that that feels like a useful compromise. I I, I don't know if that's the case or not. I, I mean, I'm just. The question is, if it's you know, if it's coming down to like a week or two, would we be willing to just then push the envoy release back a little bit for this quarter? I, I'm, I'm just brainstorming right now. Yeah. Um, it feels like a useful compromise. I, I guess all I'm saying is, if we let's to me, let's see where we get. You know, by the second or third week of September, and it feels yeah. like we're done with the low hanging fruit, and we feel good about how things are, then that's fine. But if we get there and, you know, we're thinking, ah, I wish we had one more week, like we could do a bunch more stuff here. That feels like a, that feels like a good use of time to, to me. Yeah. I mean, the way I, I think of this is we were le basically learning what kind of automation would be useful. So I'm going to be by hand basically do V3 and then we can go back and even push into Q4 some of the automation parts of this work. And, uh, so right. I feel what's important to do is get the right API uh, cut and then the actual um, tooling and automation bits. Some of these things can, you know, for example, you know, the stuff like to keep the two APIs in sync or to make sure we're not violating any constraints on what single definite, what, you know, ODR and this kind of stuff. This can, this, some of this stuff can be pushed back and we can do it by, by hand up the first time around. Sure. I, I just, I still feel like, I'm just thinking through some of the issues just around, you know, even some of the small things that we wanted to do, some of the federation concepts, like making sure that we have named filters, extensions, and named host weights, and a couple of things. Um, 
you, you know, yeah. I mean, it's like there's there's some work to do here, and, and I, I just I don't think it's in our interest to rush it by a particular date. I'm not saying to let it slip three months, but if we yeah. need a bit of extra time, that feels okay. I mean, to, I mean to, to the extent that some of these things are incremental, that um, for example, let's say you could always add a name a name field to something later on. I feel we could push them back into we we could add them to V3. Um, after it's been cut, right? We, it's not like V3 is completely frozen. What we're yeah. doing is we're, we're, we're banning backward, the backward compatibility. Yeah. Here's, here's one thing that I would, I would maybe suggest, um, because I'm going to be honest, like the existing UDPA docs are like 30 pages and very, very, very yeah, hard. Last one was two pages. Come on. I... <laughs> yeah, it's lots of, lots of words. Um, I, I'm just... <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> you diagram. I'm just thinking like tactically, whether yeah. it's GitHub issues in the, in the UDPA repo or whatever. And I, I can help with this. Can we just open issues on, on like the things that we want to actually fix? <laughs> um, right, right. Like we're, we're going to pick a small number of things that we think that we want to fix before we cut V3. Whether yeah. that's the that's the scalable routing or the listener polymorphism or the cluster extensions, the named filters, I'm just thinking we could open a couple issues and then and then we'll have a better idea of what we're. I mean, well, we already have the V3 API label and we have a bunch of these under that. We may even need we we may need to more aggressively triage that label. I'm planning on also doing a sweep of all the various V2 API things in marketing. Okay. Uh, moving them across uh, as needed, and some may even go all the way to before API. That, that's fine. I mean, however, however you want to track is fine. Like whether yeah. it's a spreadsheet or issues, or it doesn't really matter. Um, but I just think that will give us um, a better way of collaborating on like these are the things that we want to. These are the small fixes or small additions that we would like to optimally land in V3. And to to your point. We can look at one of those things and say, oh, it's incremental. We can add it later. That's fine. Um, but some of the things that I'm thinking of are not going to be incremental. Like, right. So for example, like named filter configs is not incremental over the current situation. We actually have to fix that proactively. Um, so, so, so like, let's just make sure that we're getting on top of those things. That's correct. Um, okay. So let's, let's try, um, so if, if at your end, you can make sure everything's filed and labeled correctly. Yes. I can sweep later this week and make sure everything at my end's in and other folks in the community can hopefully look at that label and um, either look at the issues there or add any of their own. Um, yeah, that sounds good. But my, my, my general comment though, is that to people who are either on the call now or, or who are gonna listen to this later is, you know, we have four to six weeks basically to make some incremental, not revolutionary changes to the API. So, you know, if there's things that you want to see, um, you know, n now's the time to speak up. Uh, so yeah. just keep, keep that in mind. And I, I mean, and again, I'm just being realistic because it's, it's one thing for us to do this within Envoy, but then trying to reconcile this with theoretically making the other data plans happy I'm less convinced that the timeline is going to work unless we take a harder line on just this is what we're doing. Let's let's what make do you mean it happen. The data plans happy. Well, I'm just saying is that even looking at your existing routing PR, the the the, the first sketch of it. Yeah, that, that's that's not going to go into V3. That will that will go into V4. What we'll go into V3 will just be some. We're going to just move, move some base types across as a sort of a just testing. Oh, the okay. Sorry. Then maybe I'm I'm a little confused then so yeah. what what is that pr then like what are that, we that pr is going to probably be um so i think all the udpa data model and transport protocol stuff like the meat of all this stuff is essentially going to probably land over the coming year in alpha states and v4 is effectively you think using envoy's clock it'll be v4 alpha right i see what you're saying oh okay 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 so basically we'll snap v3 with very minor changes move a couple of things into udpa repo and then we'll start work on v4 alpha yes i i guess then i'm going to ask a stupid question what like what is the point of v3 then why don't we just start with it's, it's, V3 it's a, Alpha being UDPA? It's, it's, it's a deprecation sweep. It allows us to basically clean up 
uh, anything that we've not deprecated, which we're not going to remove from the API at this point. And obviously, and, and then other random stuff, which is just kind of a bit ugly and we would like to- Got it. it. Okay. All right. Okay. I, I mean, I guess it, it seems fine. I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm not sure that it actually really matters that much. Like, I feel like we could just go straight. We could make V4 alpha, V3 alpha. I mean, if we're willing to live with um, all the deprecations and sort of- Yeah, I'd, I'll speak up here. I'd rather not have three years worth of deprecated features. Like, okay. if, and plus, I think it's worthwhile getting a feel for the tooling of having two versions in progress, like sooner rather than later. Just okay. like feature flags and whatever else, like there was a bunch of work that we didn't anticipate that just got piled on. So having like a minimal change that's not gonna be super painful, learning how to support two in parallel, and then doing like the big one makes a lot of sense to me. Okay, Launch it Sorry. So, sounds good. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's all from my end. Uh, there's Jot cookie support. So hi, uh, my name is Jeremy. Uh, I'm from Duo Security and new to the Envoy group. We, um, I guess I'm not actually technically in the Envoy group, uh, but joined to, to say hi. Um, uh, there's a group of researchers at Duo who are uh, looking into Istio a lot, which uses Envoy uh, everywhere as the communications backbone. And we've been uh, investigating, so Istio, currently for auth currently uses jots uh, as a HTTP authorization header uh, to authenticate users as they make connections into their applications within Istio. Um, and the Envoy proxy uh, supports pulling jots out of an HTTP authorization header, but doesn't currently support pulling it out of uh, a cookie. And there's uh, uh, a number of GitHub issues on like the Istio issue page that people are asking for this feature. We were looking into this feature. Uh, just last week, we discovered that the Istio group is working on an OIDC uh, auth proposal uh, that might sort of uh, supplant the idea of using jots in cookies directly. Uh, but it's something that we were looking into. Um, and so I was hoping to sort of just say hi and pull the room and see if anybody had thoughts on, on that, if, if we were going to look into that and maybe submit like a pull request sometime in the future. Yeah, the, the story of the JOT authentication in Istio is a little bit complicated and the JOT authentication filter is uh, diverged from what we have in Envoy upstream right now. So I think the feature of like extracting JOT, to, um, JOT from headers a little bit improved in the upstream envoy. I didn't follow what have done in Istio proxy right now. So it might be already usable um, with the like the upstream uh, just filter in envoy, but not supported in Istio proxy yet. Um, so that one, one thing the tech that, that we have uh, in Istio side. Um, and also the uh, OIDC group is like um, is trying to do more um, comprehensive story of supporting OIDC with the JOT authentication. So that's the current status. Yeah, I've been looking into the OIDC proposal and that's looking really good. We're going to join the, the meetup uh, on that proposal tomorrow mm -hmm. um, yeah. and find out more about that. But um, I guess, so just to, just to clarify, you mentioned that Upstream Envoy has JOT support in the authorization header. Were you saying that it also already has support in uh, where it can pull JOTs out of cookies? Yes, I think so. We oh. recently added up, um, there's a recently a PR is for supporting, uh, extracting JOTs from other header and matching from part of the um, like header, like semicolon, equal based, like the which field to extract. I think you might be able to make use of that, but I'm not super confident that it's usable to extract from cookie. Right. So I know, yeah, I know that you can specify an alternate header to not not only okay. alternate header um, in upstream. We recently uh, added that to how to ex 
extracts from part of the header. So. Oh, so potentially including the cookies. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll, you said there, there was a, a PR submitted. Is that, is that on the, the, the GitHub? Yeah. I can go find that. Okay. Yeah. I'll go look into that. Okay. Thanks very much. Any other topics? There is a comment on here about Windows. Hello, all. Uh, Bill Rowe here. Uh, so, uh, Yakul uh, and I are here just to kind of check in. Um, been appreciating all of your help over on Envoy Dev, of course, uh, trying to get uh, the Windows port to build. Um, I'm largely interested in um, your awareness of any, uh, any other groups uh, uh, working toward or interested in consuming Envoy on Windows, um, first off. Uh, and uh, just to kind of give a little bit of an update, um, we basically have all the sources building. Um, there's a whole bunch of work around IO handle and um, uh, the uh, IO socket handle impl uh, that we have to finish cleaning up. Of course, uh, we did a bunch of work, Stephen did a bunch of work uh, way back into last year. And so now we're finally getting caught up to, to the uh, current uh, origin master, uh, trying to get back in sync so you guys can uh, accept some patches. Um, but uh, biggest, biggest problems we're having are around the extensions API. Um, so, and I don't know how to, uh, I, I don't know the, the level of detail we want in terms of the PR on that, but basically we're finding that a lot of the uh, extensions uh, weren't actually built with the Envoy extensions uh, CC uh, library and other stubs that were made to tune whether or not uh, those extensions are in fact in the list. Um, I've seen some interesting proposals on dev to kind of move that over to uh, assemble our list of uh, enabled extensions right off the bat, even even as the build system, even as Bazel kicks in. So we would actually know uh, from end to end which pieces of the in the extensions tree are useful and which pieces are not. Sorry, um, sorry, I'm not. But uh, so we. Hey, 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 sorry, I, I'm not following. What What's the problem? Okay. Well, uh, what I've found is, is that uh, a number of the extensions are just using the normal Envoy Bazel uh, declarations and not using the uh, flavor that we had built that was built for uh, selecting extensions I don't uh, there, there's I don't really... I don't Go think ahead. that's true I mean I'm 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 positive that's not true so if, if there's an example okay. of that I, I would I would like to know sure sure yeah, sure, I, sure. I, I think I think yeah I think you're misunderstanding how we are actually building because the Bazel is smart enough to detect what the rule is not required by a specific target. So if you do like slash source slash dot dot dot, you will be basically including any everything. But if you do like slash source slash exist slash envoy static, then those not enabled extensions are not being compiled anyway. Right. So, okay. That, that I understand. And um, yeah. which is excellent. Uh, I guess, I guess my question kind of comes down to when we try to invoke the tests, uh, yeah. that's so, where okay. it gets so extremely the, confused. If the test is not using Envoy extension, it, CC test, that will be accidentally included in the test suite. That's true. Um, so, I, and uh, speaking up, um, for the Windows interest, we do have a custom ask for Windows support. So mm -hmm. I'm happy to take a look on your uh, Windows port and do some tests based on that. And, so, yeah. oh, I, I was going to say, and on, on that topic, and just, just in the interest of time, since we're almost out of time, um, I really would like Microsoft to do some work here. Um, mm -hmm. So I, let's, let's take it offline. Um, I'm going to follow up with Microsoft again and maybe uh -huh. see if they can kick in some some part-time help here um, okay. so so maybe uh if you think that you can help Lisa, maybe we could start a thread just between us and just sure. 
talk about some strategy. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys. Yeah. Appreciate All right. it. So well, where is your like Windows port right now? Is that open somewhere in, on GitHub so I can take a rough look or not yet? Uh, yes, but it's not merged to uh, master uh, quite yet. Uh, Yekel, do you want to address that? Yeah, okay, I, I can follow up with you, uh, with you uh, offline on Slack. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a note to talk to Microsoft also. And, and then mm -hmm. could, we, could we start an a offline mail thread? Sure. Yeah, please go ahead. And, and I, I, I also have a few contacts through uh, the Apache ASF that uh, I can poke uh, the bear and see if we can find some resource. So let me know where you're going with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go directly to the higher ups there and let me just see, see what I can figure out. Okay, sounds good. Cool. Uh, did anyone else have any quick, I think we're out of time, any real quick things? All right. Good. Okay, see you folks next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks.